Welcome to the R video tutorial on correlation. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is read in some data. So I have some data that I have stored in a data set uh, in my documents. So I'm just going to read in this data and look at it. All right, so here I have my data and I know that it read in. The only reason I keep looking at the data when I read it in is to make sure it's actually there. Okay, the first thing you may want to do is create a scatter plot. A scatter plot plots one variable against the other. And we're going to submit that. You use the plot statement. The first argument is what's along your x-axis. The second argument is along what's along your y-axis. So here I'm plotting x1 against x2. Those are the names in my data set. And here's my scatter plot. Notice that I get a negative relationship here and it puts little circles where each of the values are. Now I could go back and put in X labels and Y labels but you can look at the introduction to plotting in our video tutorial to see how to do that and add other titles. All right. The next thing I could do is plot X1 against X3 which is another variable in the data set. And here you see a nice positive relationship. Notice all the points are where the x1 value and x2 values are, or the x3 values, I'm sorry. Now, this is useful, but you would have to create a scatter plot for each of the variable combinations. And that may not be what you want to do. You might want to just look at them all at once. To do that, you could use this statement called pairs. Pairs will create pairwise scatter plots for all of the variables. In this case, this data set has four. So I'll submit that. All right, and here's my pairs data set, or my pairs plot. Now, this plot here corresponds to x1 versus x2. This one corresponds to x1 versus x3. This one corresponds to x1 versus x4. So it, this is what this diagonal tells you, which ones you're comparing against. So x2 against x3 and x3 against x4 and this is a way you can explore this. This is a really useful plot when you're trying to look at a bunch of variables at once. Now the next thing you might want to do is actually calculate the correlation coefficient and you can use the COR statement. Now this is going to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient if no other statements are provided. So if I do this I get a matrix of the correlation coefficients for all of the variables. In here you have to pay attention to what you're looking at. For example, this one here, this negative 0 0.7207 is the correlation between x1 and x2. Over here where you see this 0 0.2622, this is the correlation between x1 and x4. Down here you see 0 0.2700. This corresponds to x4 against x3. So you have to be careful about what you're doing in order to read it out correctly. But these do give you the correlation coefficients. Now, if you've taken enough statistics to know that there are several different types of correlation measures, you might want to do Spearman's correlation coefficient. And it's based on ranks. This gives you a similar type of output. However, it's in a matrix format, but it's based on Spearman's method versus Pearson's method. And another method that you may be interested in is Kendall's tau, or method that Kendall came up with, which is based on concordance and discordance. Now, this can be done by specifying the method Kendall, just like above you could do the method equals Spearman. And you can look in the help for COR to see what the methods are. If I do Kendall's tau, this is what I will get. I get another matrix. And in this matrix, you can see various values. Now, when you're doing this, you have to be aware of which ones you're looking for. If people just talk about correlation coefficient, they're probably talking about Pearson's. However, you may run across Spearman's or Kendall's, and R is able to do that as well. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on correlation. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.